Well, hello everyone. Woo welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so excited to welcome you here. This is our kickoff to our eight day celebration in honor of you. And we're celebrating using the theme, you are awesome because you are awesome. Yay, Sunny, and I got Sunny Newton here with me today. Oh, I'm so excited. Sunny and I have been planning this for months and I love Sunny, she's amazing. I'm gonna tell you our little story in a moment, but first of all, welcome. Let's see where you're coming in from. Oh, Calgary and Florida and Illinois, New Jersey. Yay, I love it. Florida, how's everyone doing today? Well, welcome, welcome. We are so happy that we're going to be able to spend this 75 minutes with you, in case you didn't know that, it's 75 minutes today. But uh, let's go through our logistics because we have a lot of good um, information to dig into today. So in case you didn't know, this program about it's 75 minutes, as I said, we'll spend about probably 50 minutes or so on the uh, educational part of the program. And Sunny is going to be sharing a lot of information, believe me. So have something ready to take notes, if you will. Then we'll have Q&A, uh, which we always do. And I bet you're going to have a lot of questions for Sunny today. And then at the very end, we're going to wrap up with a few announcements. Also, how you can stay con in connection with Sunny. We'll be sure to share that information with you. Also, we have gifts. Woohoo! Sunny's got gifts too. Look at this. So throughout our webinar, I love to give away gifts, and so does Sunny. So we're going to be doing that in between as well. First of all, let me make sure I don't have any more things dinging over here. I don't know if I was good at turning everything off. And that just happens. Okay. So anyways, you will also receive a replay link. So in case you miss anything, you can go back to that. But let's get started because I want to tell you about Sunny. Like I said, I just I love her. I've gotten to know her so well after the past few years. But it was 11 years ago. Oh, 11 years ago that um, I met Sunny, I believe via telephone, we talked to each other. And at that time, Sunny was starting Admin Awards. And she had called me, I believe we were talking about what cities might be good cities to start in with the Admin Awards. And of course, I have a lot of friends, a lot of friends, uh, EAs in San Jose, um, was one of the areas, you know, that I thought was great, but there's a lot of wonderful cities out there. So anyways, that started the conversation. And then Sunny evolved, and before I knew it, 10 years had, so it was 11 years, but 10 years, I think, had passed. And finally, last year, I got to attend one of the Admin Awards events, which was a phenomenal gala. I was blown away. Uh, it was the one in Silicon Valley, and I was also so honored and excited to be able to give out the award for strategic partnership. And I, that meant a lot to me because I so believe in the strategic partnership. And from that point on, Sunny and I became closer. We got to know each other. We've talked many, many times. Um, and then we've collaborated on some projects. And then I was very, very blessed. Sorry, I got to show this off and it's so heavy. I was awarded, you can't see it too well, can you, because of the light, with the um, Jeanette Castellano Lifetime Achievement Award this March um, from the Admin Awards and Sunny. And that was just a tremendous honor. So I could just tell you, I love her so, so much. She's an amazing person and passionate. Now I'm going to turn it over to Sunny. I want her to tell you about uh, her little journey and how she started and also why public recognition is really critical to our profession. So Sunny, I'll yes. turn it over to you. Yay, welcome. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. This is so exciting, y'all. Thank you so much uh, to everyone for being on the call. So Joan, I have to add one thing to your Silicon Valley story from last year. So uh, as Joan mentioned, we had never met in person. And we're setting up for the 2022 Silicon Valley Admin Awards, and we're hearing all this ruckus. 
And what we didn't know is Joan Burge was in the house and you would have thought it was Elvis coming into the Santa Clara Marriott. It was like admins that were helping us set up were coming out of the woodwork to go and shake her hand in person. Um, and so it was just such a joy for us to see someone that is so beloved and so admired by so many that we finally got to meet in person. And as Joan mentioned, um, we could not be more proud to present Joan with the award that bears my mother's name. Um, so thank Thank you for that. And thank you for the opportunity this morning to, to, to share a little bit about our story and the importance of public recognition and self-advocacy. So I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version of the Admin Award. So I um, am the daughter of a career executive secretary and elect an electrician originally from New Jersey, Jersey in the house, also <laughs> Texas, which where I've lived much longer than Jersey. But, um, <laughs> just grew, grew up watching the incredible impact my mom had for her role as an executive secretary to presidents and CEOs of small companies. And then later in life, uh, my mom reentered the workforce um, when she thought she was retiring. Uh, she and my father actually got divorced after 41 years. And she did that in the role of a corporate receptionist. And what I will tell you is I think um, she had the biggest impact from her role as receptionist, where she was the matriarch, the first person that would greet nervous applicants, the last person that would say goodbye to coworkers leaving the organization and all the moments in between. Uh, people used to get in trouble for hanging out in reception because they just loved my mom so much. So when she retired, just shy of her 80th birthday, believe it or not, she was given a scrapbook that was like five inches thick of letters and writings and pictures from her 15 years before she did retire that just really uh, reinforced the incredible impact she had on her coworkers and leaders from her uh, administrative position. And so uh, in 2012, um, we created what was the world's first public recognition program at the time for administrative professionals. And it was all inspired by my mom, just having seen firsthand, not only the incredible impact that she had on her leaders, coworkers, but also she was so cherished and so valued. And I just knew that, well, first of all, I thought it was crazy that there were thousands of award programs recognizing the CEO of the year, the entrepreneur of the year, top financial planners, doctors, lawyers, but there wasn't a single recognition program for the backbones of companies, people like my mom, right? And so we created it in 2012 in Dallas, didn't have any grand plans to do anything nationally, but after that first program, we started to hear from cities across the U.S. saying, hey, when are we getting an admin awards? So um, we did start our national expansion. Um, and I remember that day, Joan, when we were talking about, like, where do we need to go first? And you said, man, San Jose, Silicon Valley would be a great market out of Dallas to get this program into. And then uh, that's where we began. And today we're in nine cities and we recognize thousands of administrators a year uh, uh, representing all different titles. And it's just an absolute joy and an honor to be able to shine a spotlight on such an incredibly special and wonderful community of administrators. Yeah, and um, I, what a wonderful story. I just, I mean, I love it. And um, I just like, I wanna bring to the attention that the awards throughout the whole year, it is so professionally done. Um, and just the way I was just very, very impressed. Uh, you know, it was above and beyond what I imagined. And when I showed up last year, I was like, wow, they have pulled out all the stops, like VIP treatment. And that just really shows how much you care, you know, to make it such a special event. So um, I think one of the things we wanted to talk about is, is why public recognition is critical to helping our profession overcome outdated stereotypes. Yeah, so I believe that only by publicly sharing the success stories and accomplishments of the modern day administrator and what the role entails today, do we have a shot at overcoming the ridiculous stereotypes that we all know still exist. 
Um, think about this. If, if we keep admins in the shadows, yes, we get your behind the scenes, but that does not mean that you should be invisible. Uh, but if we keep all the admins do and are today under lock and key and fail to educate our leaders, coworkers, broader communities, the media, don't get me started on the media. Um, but if we fail to publicly champion and recognize the tremendous value that admins bring to their organizations, like how do you think that's going to impact things, Right. Do you think career pathing will be a priority? Compensation and bonus opportunities? There's still so much pay disparity in the profession. Professional development, is that going to be a priority? I mean, why invest in admins if AI is capable of doing everything an admin can do? And we allow people to believe that the role is becoming obsolete. Because we know it's not the case, right? Uh, leadership development, why would we bother developing admins, right? Admins aren't leaders. I watch Mad Men 9 to 5. That's what an admin is. No, no, no. Um, and don't get me started about how often I'm watching a movie or a show and some stupid comments made in jest about somebody running off with their secretary. Like, I don't know anybody that's ever run off with their boss or the other demeaning comments that are made about just a secretary. I mean, come on, it's 2023, enough. So only I believe if we publicly share the achievements of admins, do we change these stale perceptions. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the other thing I'd like to say, you know, in addition to the importance of public recognition, you know, changing uh, or reshaping the image of the modern day admin, y'all, I think we have tremendous work to do in this profession still in terms of making sure administrators get the recognition that they deserve, um, but also the respect as well from their organizations and coworkers. Uh, you know, we've come a long way. Joan, you know better than I do. You've been in this space a lot longer, but I am still astounded. What I would say is on a weekly basis on the ignorance that still exists out there and how in this age of DEI, admins continue to be excluded from recognition programs, professional development, bonus opportunities, leadership opportunities. Some of you may have seen, uh, you know, the, the post I made this past week about a very large bank. Uh, who we approached because they had nominations in the system. And the head of HR said, we only support award programs available to our C-suite executives. In 2023, um, so, you know, I, that's a whole other Oprah show that we could do for the next three hours. But nothing really gives you insight into what's really going on in companies when it comes to admin culture, like running a public recognition program uh, for admins, because we have visibility not into one company, much like you, Joan, but we have visibility into a lot of companies. And we still have a work to a lot of work to do. But and I know I'm babbling. But what I'll say no, is you're good. It's good. There is nothing that thrills me more than when we shine the spotlight on not only what it means to be an extraordinary administrator, but also on the awesome executives and companies that value and take such great care of their admins. And that's the really, really fun part for us because we know a rising tide lifts all ships and we're raising that tide through long overdue recognition of a community that so richly deserves it. Yeah, that's for sure. I was, I know we, you and I had this discussion a few weeks ago, how I was telling Sonny basically, like I remember you know, my husband, he was in sales his entire career. He was in outdoor advertising. He was in real estate, different industries. And I do remember there were always these, these award banquets for him, you know, for his industry, for his career, for sales. And there were all these, you know, wonderful things he could accomplish and achieve, which was great, you know, especially for us as a couple. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, that made me realize, like, and so then when Sonny, you know, when I learned about the Edmund Awards, it really made me think how, you know what, there are all these awards for every other career, nurses, doctors, real estate agents, say, I mean, everybody, marketing, and yet there was nothing. Yeah. And, and the advocating, like you said, it's so important. I mean, we're going to talk about different ways you can advocate. This isn't just, oh, apply for the awards. We don't want you to think that. But why? Because that's really what it is. You know, by giving those awards, we are talking up um, why 
the assistants deserve this, what they're doing, what their accomplishments. And like Sunny said, we need that, that media. We need to get it out through the social and so forth and let it snowball and get really get legs on it. So um, let, let me go on. I know we need to go on. Did we cover everything in that opportunity? I know you talked about the I think DDI, we did. Yep. Um, and all of that. So, um, oh, I guess we're going to do some giveaways really quick. Yay! All right, we're going to do our first giveaways, everybody. And then we're going to dig into the next uh, piece of this topic. So, yay, this is the fun part. Malia, are you ready? So I'm going to give away, what am I giving away first? Again, to go with our theme, you are awesome. This is, you are simply awesome. It's a makeup. <laughs> and Malia loves shopping for all of you, by the way. I have to say, I told her how much she could spend. She got to go shop. I loved that when I was an assistant. I loved it when my company would say, here, we need some, some things, you know, for gifts or whatever. Here's your budget. I'd be, woohoo, I'm spending someone else's money. Okay, <laughs> but it was fun too because of our theme it was really fun because we have such oh, a great yeah. theme going on okay so the makeup bag will go to nancy i can't pronounce the last name i'm sorry zook zook c-z-u-c-z-o-r nancy all right Yay. <laughs> okay and then sunny from sunny we she's got three t-shirts she's going to give away she's going to show them to you how lovely they are Yay. So three, full three okay we have robin mckinney helen holmes and sarah lamb Yay! Yay. <laughs> and those will come directly from sunny right yep you got it. All right. Are you ready for our next piece? This is really needy. And um, gosh, as I was reading through some of Sunny's notes, it's, it is staggering. So what we want to really cover now, and especially, well, obviously Sunny, the staggering difference between male and female self-advocacy in the workplace. Yeah. So um, I want to give you a little bit of a backdrop. So yeah. this is a topic that I became increasingly interested in a few years ago. In fact, it had really been building for years, if I'm being honest. The reality that women don't do near the job of sharing our accomplishments and advocating for ourselves in the workplace as our male counterparts. Um, first, as someone who works with admin professionals and also the daughter of one, I'm noticing this really magnified reluctance um, to share achievements and to advocate uh, compared to other professionals within the organization. And then I'm also seeing differences in how male admins are um, participating in recognition uh, and how they just will never say, no, I'm not interested in being nominated or I'm going to, you know, pass on this nomination and on recognition. It just does not happen. And this really became magnified as we began to grow in more and more markets, right? Um, but also, if I'm being honest, as a female entrepreneur, I was struggling with it, y'all. Um, I realized that I was probably playing it too safe to the detriment of my company at times when it came to sharing our success stories. So um, as the saying goes, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that is honestly what happened. I was sort of randomly invited to attend this Google workshop called I Am Remarkable, which I'll be honest, like the name alone turned me off. I'm like, it's a Google, I am what? I am remarkable. Um, but a bunch of former colleagues and a couple of bosses actually were going to be there who invited me that I adored. It was during the pandemic and I was dying to get out. So I thought, what the heck? Even if I didn't love the name of it, I thought it was kind of hokey. As I read the description, I was like, okay, I really need to go to this thing. I think I've got some things to learn. And Basically, what uh, the Google I Am Remarkable workshop is, uh, it was created by two female Google employees. They were actually both named Anna, uh, coincidentally, but they were in a workshop for women at Google, and they were asked to stand up and share what made them remarkable. And what they noticed was that so many of the women struggled, I mean, really struggled, and some like couldn't even do it. So curious about their observation, they began researching and discovered a vast body of literature that confirmed what they intuitively knew. Women and other underrepresented groups um, 
often struggle with self-promotion and are conditioned at a really young age not to speak openly about their achievements, right? Think about it. I think there's a whole TED Talk on this. Um, you know, boys are celebrated for being brave when they're young and girls are celebrated for being good, right? How many times did you hear, if you're a, a woman on this call, good girl, be a good girl, right? Um, so these two Annas created this workshop, which today is really a movement. It's the I Am Remarkable workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's reached 178 countries. They have hundreds of thousands of participants. And it's all about helping women and other underrepresented groups in the workplace get more comfortable when it comes to self-promotion. Because we suck at it. It is a fact. We know nobody is better at shrugging off praise or lowballing our abilities than women. Um, and here are just some of the findings and stats that I pulled from the workshop literature. I'm actually an I Am Remarkable facilitator, um, but since then I, I've done a ton of research on the topic myself because we can't do what we do as an organization without inspiring admins during their journey with us to get comfortable advocating for themselves and sharing their accomplishments. So just a few stats to to, I think, make your ears perk up. So a lot of you have probably read the HP study that found that women only apply to jobs if they're 100% qualified, while men apply when they meet only 60% of the qualifications. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? I've been there myself. I would never have thought to apply for a job unless I literally had every qualification. Men are also four times more likely to ask for higher pay than women with the exact same qualifications. And that is a big problem, y'all, because when you look at the gender pay gap that exists, we've participated in that. I'm not saying it's our fault, but it is our responsibility to change it. When it comes to negotiating, two and a half times more women than men say they feel a great deal of apprehension about negotiating. And when a study was done about women asking them about their self-advocacy in the workplace, 41% said they don't self-advocate enough or at all. Why? Well, 59% cited general shyness or anxiety. 43% said fear of retribution. 31% cited fear of being labeled as aggressive. Um, and then another study in 2021 showed that 82% of participants have hid a success from a loved one, coworker, stranger, often out of a desire to avoid bragging. But here's the deal, y'all. It ain't bragging if it's true, right? Like that's not bragging. It's stating facts. So those are just some of the stats that I know I was shocked by um, that I thought you would find interesting this morning. Yeah, they're, they're very, very, very interesting. So um, I want to kind of build out on that. I'm looking over at the chat and I thought of a couple things as you were talking. Um, and getting to that question of the why, and I'm just watching our time too. Like you said, the why is that, right? Um, and I, a couple things I thought of and what I've seen in the chat too, like nobody's ever really taught us, you know, how to do that, how to not feel that we're bragging, right? Because uh, it's true, you know, I think we're a little more humble and, and um, don't like to brag. Uh, too much about our accomplishments. So the learning, that's a, a piece of it, which we're going to talk about. That's something you're going to cover. How do you, how do you do that? What are the steps you take and how do you build that? So we will cover that. So I hope you can stay on because we are going to get to that. The other, uh, someone had commented about, we take our talents for granted, which all that. that's probably true. We don't, you know, I know one thing, like in some of our training classes, there are certain times when depending on what the topic is, I'll ask the assistants to pair up and share with each other what is something they do well to help their executives succeed. Or I'll ask them, each person, go around and tell us something you do that makes you stand out or makes you a star, right? And it's always this feeling like, well, surely there's really nothing I have to share. Every assistant in this room does this, you know, all 25 of them. And I'm like, no, everybody doesn't do it. <laughs> so I think that as an assistant, you have this assumption that, well, surely every assistant must do this. And, you know, a lot of our training um, is geared around, and, and for those of you on this webinar and Sunny, uh, maybe you know this, Sunny, it's geared around having you figure out what your gifts are. 
What is it that makes you stand out? What is it that makes you shine? That's why we have this whole star performance theme going for 32 years. It's we want you to dig deep. We want you to find out because you have talents that other people don't have or they're not going to do it in the way that you do it. So, um, but it, it's getting to that level of comfort, which we're going to talk about. How do I get comfortable? It is exploring and knowing your special gifts. And you've got to dig into that a little bit. Um, and then again, how do we do it in a way uh, that we're going to be very comfortable with, but, but also that, yeah, we do need to be bold. I talk about being bold, standing out. And I but really believe, Sunny, in this day and age of people working remotely, working in their houses, there you're not visible. If you're not showing up in your offices on a regular basis, they're not going to see your talents. So you have to advocate for yourself. You have to let people know what you do. Yes. So um, anyway, we're both very passionate about this. So we're this actually leads into I think our next. The next piece we want to talk about that I thought was really interesting, Sunny, when you were talking about, you know, all you, all these assistants, you work for leaders, you work for executives, you work for people who were bold, are bold. You know, it's it's an expectation. They're not afraid. So I love that whole topic area and would love for you to share all your insight on that. Yeah, absolutely. So think about the qualities of your leader, right? Um, or your organization CEO. Do you think these people have gotten to where they are by playing coy, by not self-advocating, by not going after what they want, by not sharing their successes, by shunning opportunities for public recognition? I mean, do people say, yeah, I think I'll, I'll skip the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm good. Or no, I don't need to be on the cover of Forbes. Or I'll skip going to Northwestern to accept my award. Um, no, right? Uh, they take risks. This is their language. Even the most humble leaders have succeeded in striking the important balance of confidently, not arrogantly. I saw somebody in the chat say, it's we got to learn, right? How to strike that balance, to not come across as arrogant, right? And, but to still have humility. Um, but they, they've done it. They're confidently championing themselves and their accomplishments to get to the next level. They get it. It's critical. And here's the deal, y'all, the reality of it. For leaders that you might classify as even just a little narcissistic, the research actually shows that not only do they personally engage in self-promotion and sharing their accomplishments confidently, but they also react more positively to employees who engage in self-promotion because of that whole similarity attraction principle, right? People develop better relationships with people who behave more like them. And in line with that, leaders react more positively to self-promoting employees. It's that simple. So all that to say, you may have been missing a bit of an opportunity uh, to connect with your leader by not being more proactive in self-promotion and advocating for yourself because likely they're going to love you for it. Yeah, I love that idea. And again, if we're you're trying to be viewed as a strategic partner and, and be considered, you know, on that level with them, we have to mirror some of what they do. We have to mirror those behaviors. And like you said, I think a leader is going to respect the majority. If they're a good leader, they are going to respect that you brought to their attention what you do well, because they don't always see what you do well. And the other part is how can they advocate for you and you know fight for a salary for you, a salary increase, a job title change. They can't go to battle for you if they don't really know what you do. So, and again, it's, it's all in how you do it, which we will, we're gonna get to that. Sunny is gonna get to that. So um, I know the next, so this leads in then to our next question. Wow, I didn't even realize we have this all leading in and tying in really nicely about the self-promotion. That range, and again, this kind of blew my mind when you said it, there was this range between, you know, that yucky, arrogant kind of promotion and then people who do nothing, they just hide. So yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so, listen, I agree. Like, there's something called LinkedIn cringe. And I think I get it on a daily basis to the point to where I'm not paying attention to LinkedIn as much as I know I probably need to be. Because um, it's just everywhere. And it's constant. And uh, it's all about me, 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 right? Um, so I think 
because nobody gets turned off faster than when people are arrogant and cocky and constantly boasting, especially if they don't have the goods to back it up. So I think the mistake we make is you have like arrogant and boasting and cocky over here, and then you have nothing over here. And you forget that there's this big gushy middle, which is sharing our achievements and confidently sharing our success stories. And I think the people, the mistake that people make is they're so against being perceived as arrogant that they err on the side of overcorrecting and do nothing, which is a really dangerous overcorrection for a million reasons. But that big middle is what lives where self-promotion is and recognizing our accomplishments, which is critical for a number of reasons. And some of this is I am remarkable research, right? So recognizing our accomplishments has positive effects on our well-being, our self-confidence, our motivation. It's critical to career project projection, I'm sorry, progression. Um, celebrating our achievements in smaller big ways combats our brain's negativity bias. That whole imposter syndrome that I think so many of us struggle with it boosts our self-esteem and motivates us to achieve more. But if you don't want to do this because of all the benefits for yourself, because I know you're always focused on everybody around you, um, it's important for other people too. Only when we share our experiences can we inspire others to learn from our stories. You can't see it if you can't be it. Um, and how sad would it be for admins to not know about the amazing things that your peers are doing if people didn't show them what was possible, what excellence looks like, what could be. TED Talks are a great example. We probably all have seen a TED Talk and they're so popular because inherent within the speaker's narrative is usually some form of accomplishment, something they've overcome. Maybe they've written a book, they've climbed a mountain, they've overcome an obstacle, a difficulty. We find hearing about these achievements inspirational and motivational. Have you ever walked away from a TED Talk going, oh, that person, they were so full of themselves or all they did was brag. No, right? And it's no different when we share our accomplishments. Um, it can really inspire those around us sometimes on a smaller scale, but it's important because here's the deal, y'all. Our accomplishments do not speak for themselves. That is the biggest lie. We cannot assume what others do or do not know about us, especially your executives. They don't know what in the heck you do in a day's time, much less a year's. So as Joan mentioned earlier, when it's time for review time, um, honestly, research shows that if you're waiting until review time to tell your boss what you've accomplished, it's probably too late. The time to start is now. So when you have that conversation about the promotion, the pay increase, the foundation is there. You're not starting from scratch, having to invent your worth and your value on the spot. So being proactive and being consistent gives your leader the info they need to justify your promotion, a pay raise, maybe your position, right? Um, but here's the other thing I want to mention is there's also been really interesting insight into how self-advocacy and self-promotion impacts your likability. Because that's the other thing. Like people are going to think I'm a jerk if I'm talking about what I've accomplished. One study found that Tactics such as self-promotion generally become less likely to affect judgments regarding performance in longer-term relationships because observers can test claims of accomplishments and competence against their own observations. So think about it. People are watching you do these things. They know that you're pulling rabbits out of your hat. Like every day you show up to the, to the office, right? They're already watching this. So for you to say, hey, I'm really excited that I just did this. I maybe just learned this new skill. I did something that was really difficult, but I succeeded. Man, y'all, they're cheering you on because they're there. They're watching you do it. They just don't always tell you what they're watching, right? So I thought that was a really interesting study to share. This is, um, sorry, I am listening to you and I'm also watching the chat because uh, I want to see what people are thinking, right? And I know I've got to kind of get us uh, staying on our, our track here. However, as you're talking and I'm watching these comments, Sunny, there's some deeper stuff here and I know we can't get into it all today, um, but I, I do want to comment about it, and especially from a leader's standpoint, an executive standpoint. And I am an employer, and I do have employees. So some of you are saying, well, 
you know, it's just my job, you know, that that's what I'm supposed to do. So I don't, I don't want to brag about myself. Like what's the difference between bragging about myself and doing my job? First of all, right. I'm paying you a salary to be an excellent assistant. Okay. I'm giving my assistant, a, I've had many assistants over the years. What I'm looking for is what are you doing? How are you growing? What wow factors are you giving me so I can justify your next salary? You know, in companies and organizations, leaders, they have to justify. Now, some of you might say, well, I haven't had a, an increase for three years. Maybe they don't know your wow factors, okay? Like it's your responsibility. And I was an assistant for 20 years and I did advocate for myself and I did put together three page documents where I showed everything new I learned over a year. I showed them how I trained other people in the organization. I showed them how I streamlined. I wasn't bragging. Like Sonny said, these are facts and they need to know these facts. Um, and, and the other thing, I get it. It's true. Your job is your job and you need to be excellent. But we're also living in a world where one, we're all e you're all equal. You're all on screen. You're all in the virtual world. Many of you are in the virtual world. A few of you go in the office. Um, employers more and more are struggling to find the wow factors. And I'm going to tell you, I started something. I give stars away for 32 years. I've given stars away in my training classes. When I hear a creative idea, I hear a creative word you know, instead of what everybody else answers. When I could see a team worked hard on a, a, a role play activity or they put together a presentation, they deserve a star. It's like, wow, okay, you went that extra mile. You're that performer. You went to the next level. So I actually just started this and my company were doing, I'm like, why aren't I doing this with my own employees? Now, one thing, my employees are star performers across the board every day, year after year. They're phenomenal, but they still come up with ideas that blow me away. So quarterly, we're giving out stars and they're allowed to give out stars to each other. So at the end of the quarter, whoever has the most stars, guess what? They're going to get a special $100 um, Visa or American Express gift card because good leaders want to award people. They want to keep you. They also want to know that your work does matter. And if you have an executive who says, well, that's just your job, then that's that executive. But the majority, the majority are out there looking for these employees to rise up and shine and stand out. And part of today's requirements in the workplace are creativity. They are innovation for every level in the organization, even the mail room. So sorry, I got on my little bandwagon, um, but I think it's important because I, I get that. I really can understand how you could say, but this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what you pay me. So why would I brag about it? Do you have any thoughts on that, Sonny? Yeah, I mean, listen, there is a reason why, you know, recognition, I think if we follow it all the way back, it started with our military. Like commendations, they're important. Yes, people are doing their jobs and people are risking their lives and um, in, in obviously in, in, in the military, but like that whole rank and hierarchy, like it's important, but also, to be recognized, the Nobel Peace Prize, right? Um, the Wright Brothers Award, like there are so many awards that celebrate people in their professions, in their industries. There's a reason because it's important. Recognition, whether it's a gold star, which I love that you do that, especially at your conferences, like it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like people are noticing you. Uh, there's a quote next to excellence is appreciation of it. And we, we have that quote at every event. Um, and that's the truth, right? Like it makes a difference. I know um, when we do info sessions, I also often quote Oprah, who's, who's one of my role models. And she talks about how, you know, she's done 35,000 interviews and she's wow. interviewed President Bush, President Obama, heroes, housewives, uh, Beyonce and all of her Beyonce-ness. And she said, the thing that they all have in common is when the cameras stop, they all look at her and inevitably in their own way, they say, how did I do? That's the common denominator, y'all. And sometimes I think admins, because 
You're so many rare and amazing qualities all rolled up into one person that frankly you typically don't find all in one person. I think, you know, there's this sort of um, tendency to say, well, I do my job. I'm behind the scenes. I don't need recognition. You know, I'm not called bullshit on that. I'm sorry, Joan, I'm not supposed to cuss, but (laughs) not only is that not fair to you, it's not fair to your profession because there are people who are trying to rise through the ranks in this career that need you to show them the example, right? Um, And then the other thing is like when somebody feels it in their heart that you're worthy of recognition, by God, you accept it because it's also important to them to be able to convey their appreciation. And Joan, we're way going off script now. I know, so I know we're going to finish your thought and then we're going to- Yeah, that's really it. I know, well, Sonny and I, you can tell we're very passionate (laughs) champions being champions for you and we want you to be champions for yourself and i know we got to get to the how they do this so we're gonna let's see we do have some giveaways and then i may um, move us around a little bit so we get to tips which i think is actually yes. our next we're there yep. yeah we're gonna get there give us one more minute we're gonna do some um giveaways and then we're gonna get to how do you do this you know what what's the process so uh i'm gonna give away two gifts and we're going to do ours. This is a beautiful journal. And what is that, Malia? Keychain, I it's think. Keychain. So, yay. Who's that? That is going to go to Judy Contreras. All right. Yay. Okay. And then Malia picked out. She loves this candle. Sometime. Here it is. Uh, sometimes you forget your awesome so this is to remind you of that and it's a candle and that is going to melissa lynch all right Woo-hoo. all right some of you've got three sweatshirts right yes three admins run the world hoodies <laughs> that's nice okay we're gonna the three winners for the sweatshirts are loretta morgan Tammy Witzke and Andrea Kulaga. All right. Very good. And thank you for those, by the way, Sunny. All right. I think I really convinced you how important it is to let your gifts be known. So now we really have to get to the how, right? And and how to do that and get comfortable. And Sunny's going to take it away on this one. (laughs) You've got it. So Um, I don't have any tattoos. I'm 52 and I don't have any tattoos yet, but if I did, I know exactly the tattoo that I would get. It would be a really important reminder. And that is be afraid, do it anyway. And that's a quote by Carrie Fisher. She says, stay afraid, do it anyway. What's important is the action. You don't have to wait to be confident, just do it. And eventually the confidence will follow. Uh, I get it advocating for yourself and sharing your achievements can be scary. There's clearly something holding us all back uh, because we all struggle with it. And it's typically that menace of a four letter word fear, but everything we want in life that's worth it is on the other side of fear. We know this, it just is. But the great thing is, is you overcome it through action. And when we do that again and again and again, things that used to really be scary become nothing. You'll look back one day and go, why did this stress me out so much? Very good. Um, And I have, I guess, with that, there is, uh, we teach in one of our modules in Star Achievement, we talk about fear, intimidation, and courage. Now, courage is not the uh, absence of fear. In fact, Mark Twain says it, courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not absence. And I always think about really quick, when I first started speaking, I was a nervous wreck, believe me. Like, so why did I do that? All I wanted to do was help assistance. Speaking was the vehicle I had to use, but I was scared to death. And I'll never forget the first time the, the, when I had my first like bigger program, I think there were a hundred assistants in the audience. I was shaking, you know, because I wasn't doing it on a regular basis. I think I maybe had a half hour speech, 45 minutes. I was a nervous wreck. I had the fear and I had the courage to get on the stage. 
And I thought the worst that's going to happen is I'm going to faint and they're just not going to invite me back again. But, you know, I'm not going to die. You know, I'm not. So, <laughs> but, and then, you know, as I did it, like you said, you do it more and more and more and more. You tweak as you go along. You've got to feel your way. It's a, you learn and you grow. Um, and then it becomes a comfort zone like it did for me. And now it's my love and passion, right? Um, so the strategies, we both agree, Sonny and I both agree that first, it's your mindset. I mean, it really, every, actually everything starts in our minds. You know, if I believe I can deliver a great webinar, I'm not. If I believe, hey, I can nail this and we're going to wow these people, we're going to do it. So it's, it's what's your mindset first. Do you believe you are worthy? Do you believe it? We know you're awesome. We know it. But in your heart, do you believe you're worthy of, let, of your talents and letting people know about it? It all starts there. How do you, if you believe, oh no, like I said, I've got to hide under a corner. I believe that it, that's being braggadocious. I believe that people shouldn't bring attention to myself. Well, you know what? You're not going to do it. But it's like, darn it, gosh, darn it. I deserve it. I deserve for people to know what I do and, and be proud of what I do. And, and one other comment I want to make real quick, and then I'm going to go to you, Sonny, is you don't have to do it in this huge way. I was telling Sonny about an example a few weeks ago with Malia. I don't know everything Malia does. You know, there she has all these assignments, projects. She does it. You know, we do talk about things. But like two weeks ago, she was in here and we were talking about these speaker or no, these uh, client contracts. And we've had these for years. And in those contracts, we talk about how, you know, to send us a check, you know, and it's payable by this date in the same verbiage forever. Now, this was a little thing, but I almost fell off my chair. Well, over the years, we've had people want to wire money to us. They want to play with credit card. Look, you pay with a credit card for our, our clients where I speak, there's a 3% fee. So we're just talking about these letters and Malia just casually says, oh yeah, I changed that part of the letter. So now I give them an option. I let them know here are the four ways you could pay. And if you use a credit card and I'm like, oh my God, that's brilliant. Like why? Like, really? Are you serious? <laughs> so do you see, I just want to make a note. It doesn't have to be this huge 15 page document no. either. It, it was just right. It was just there, but I, it was good. I know. And that, that was awesome. So um, Sunny, starting with the first steps about uh, you've got your notes there. And, and so I'm going to turn it over to you. Yeah. It's funny. We have that in common. I remember before I started the Advent Awards, when I would have to sit around a table full of 10 or 15 people and be asked to speak, I would literally shake. And it was not even speak, introduce myself. I would literally <laughs> shake. And I remember when I started the Admin Awards, I told my husband, I got to be honest with you, if I'm going to have to get on a stage every year in front of 450 people at the time, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not getting on stage. It's not about me. Um, and for years, I tried to get out of it. And then I would have people tell me that's pretty selfish. Like, you got to get over it. And they were right. And it's a muscle. I don't want to get too much on that. Public speaking is a fear of many of ours. But now you can't shut Joan and I up, right? So that's we're living proof that uh, you keep flexing these muscles and, and you develop them. So back to your point, the first step is you got to know your worth, right? When you're self-advocating and when you're sharing your achievements, not only as a collective community of administrators, which I don't know if you know this, but it costs a company on average 70% of your one-year salary to replace you should you leave your organization today. 70%. Think of what you make in green, cold, hard cash. Torch it up in flames. That's what companies lose in institutional knowledge. You know how things get done on paper, and then you know how things really get done. Right. There are a million reasons why admins are a very costly employee group uh, when they're not retained. And here's the other thing I'm going to say. 
Great resignation when 47 million Americans quit their jobs. You know who was also a part of that 47 million? Administrative professionals. Because today, you know you have choices, you know your worth, and you're no longer settling. And companies are are sitting up and starting to take notice that they got to start making sure that you're in an environment where you can do your best work, where you're going to stay. Um, so understand you're an expensive proposition to replace. You also have to know what makes you personally valuable. Like if I was going to tell somebody right now what I was good at, I would say to them, you need ideas, creativity, I'm your girl. If you need me to balance a budget, I'm failing all day long, right? So like I think being honest about what you're good at and not being afraid to voice what you're not good at, right? Um, those are things that help you self-advocate. Understand that talking about accomplishments is a skill that you can absolutely establish and improve. People are not born with this gift. Nobody finds it easy. It is a muscle that needs flexing to be developed and strengthened over time. So in the I Am Remarkable workshops, we reiterate the importance of practicing sharing your achievements. How do you do that? Well, you start by writing them down in the form of statements. And you could do the I am remarkable structure, which would start with I am remarkable because. Now, it's not I am remarkable because I'm awesome. I am not remarkable because people like me. I am not remarkable because, well, maybe you're remarkable because you're funny. I do tend to really appreciate people that are funny. But <laughs> you're remarkable because of the things that you've experienced in life personally and professionally that you're going to write down and you're going to amaze yourself because you're going to go, I am really proud of that. I'm proud that, you know, I became a single parent and reentered the workforce and developed new skills and got promoted twice within five years. Like you have so many things that are remarkable that you don't even realize are remarkable about yourself that somebody wrote in the comments earlier. So when you start writing these I am remarkable statements down, that becomes the foundation of your statement bank of achievements that you now need to add to daily or weekly. Frequency is key. You got to get into the regular habit of documenting your accomplishments. Next, you have to say it out loud to somebody, maybe a friend, maybe your mom, your partner. I am remarkable because... So practice saying these statements out loud. And listen, it's going to be uncomfortable and awkward. Of course it is, but it's a really important exercise. While you're doing it, you got to be aware of self-sabotage, minimizing or criticizing your achievements. It's such an easy trap to fall into. Next, we encourage you to build another weekly habit by creating an accountability group. Maybe it's a text group, a WhatsApp group. Maybe it's a Zoom call that you have weekly or every couple weeks if you can't do it weekly, but you're going to practice sharing your achievements publicly with one another. You're going to play around with the skill. You're not always going to get it right. Sometimes you might feel odd, but think about the role models in your life or people that you admire and learn from them, right? Maybe it's an actor. Maybe it's an author. Maybe it's an entrepreneur. Maybe it's your leader, right? But you're going to find the voice that's natural to you and get more comfortable with self-promotion in a way that feels true to you. Then you're gonna share your achievements with somebody you would typically hesitate to share them with, like a manager or senior leader, because that's where it really counts. And here's the thing, y'all, it's really simple. You're stating facts about what you've accomplished. You're being thoughtful about it, intentional. You're exuding confidence, you're self-assured. You know the difference between that and somebody that walks around telling everybody how awesome they are and how everybody loves them. There's a big difference. That's bragging. But remember, if it's true and if it's based in fact, it's not bragging. Yeah, that's really, really good. Um, and you made me think, Sunny, too, with the documentation. So there's different kinds of documentation, right? Because there's simple documentation um, like I said, I had created a five page word document or something at that time, four page. The other thing though, I did want to also talk about is in our world class course, we spend a lot of time about the, and talk about the career portfolio. I've talked about a career portfolio for over 25 years. It's because someone, when I was living in Michigan, interviewed for a job with me as a secretary uh, job, and she was 
the only person she walked in with a career portfolio. I didn't even know what it was. I mean, it was like that big at this time. And I, she blew me away. That's how she had the edge over those who brought in nothing. And she got the job. So um, one thing I want to say, the career portfolio, you can all look into that, Google it. We have stuff on our website about it, what you put in the portfolio. And it's not just used for job interviews. It is a documentation of your work, kudo letters you've gotten, all kinds of things. So that's another type of documentation you can do. So I know we got to turn this over for, for questions, right? Um, but you had one story. Do you... I know we, we had a lot of other things we were going to talk about, Sunny. That's okay. Um, and we'll, we'll do, you get... do the story at least and then yes. sort of do questions and then we could circle back if we want to. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll push out a, an, an overview of this so we can share a, a little bit more with you about some of these topics. But um, so I have countless stories of admins that have advocated for themselves and their profession from across the country. Um, in fact, if I'm being really honest, the majority of, of the time when a company participates in our program, it's because fierce and mighty admins have said, we need to do this, our community needs this, um, and they're just not taking no for an answer. But I think there's one story in particular that I want to share with you, and it's, it's Debbie's story. I'm not going to give you her last name. I'm not going to give you the name of her company. You could probably figure that out if you dig deep enough. But um, so it was our Chicago Admin Awards program in 2021, and there was an EA Debbie that was nominated for uh, the Loyalty Award. And she was nominated by her leader, William, who had, she had supported for like 15 years while she was at the company, but he had taken a package during COVID. And so he went into retirement, but she was also nominated by somebody in marketing. And what I didn't know at the time is um, Debbie hadn't yet been nominated by her new leader, who I think she had supported for about a year or so, but she went to him and said, hey, I was nominated for this program called the Chicagoland Admin Awards by Will and Katie, but it would mean the world to me if you would also nominate me, given that you're my current supervisor. And he said, yeah, yeah, listen, I'm happy to do it. Let me run it by HR. I'm fairly new and I want to make sure I'm not setting a precedent that we can't keep up with. So I'll get back to you on that. So Time passes and Debbie uh, ends up becoming a finalist in the Chicagoland Admin Awards. And a couple days after we announced finalists, I get this email from a lady named Michelle in HR, who was a talent acquisition manager that essentially says, uh, we're going to need you to remove Debbie from your website. We see that you've declared her a finalist. Uh, we will not be participating. You can imagine what my response was. It was yeah, no. Um, it's one thing if Debbie wants to be removed, but we're not doing that just because HR tells us after we've been communicating with them throughout the process on what's next, and they never once responded. So it wasn't like they didn't know Debbie had been nominated because part of our process is notifying current leaders if they hadn't nominated yet and also the HR organization. So I called Debbie and I said, Debbie, this is Sunny Noonan with the Admin Awards. I'm calling because I got, well, first, congratulations on being a finalist, but I'm calling because I got this bizarre email from somebody in HR um, that's asking that we remove you from the program after you've been declared a finalist, which I'm just not comfortable doing. You've earned this recognition. Now it's public and that's just not okay with me, but I will do whatever you want. And she then said, Sunny, um, I cannot believe this is happening. She said, I am so excited about this. I am so proud to be a finalist in this program. And then she told me how she had been going to her boss saying, are you gonna nominate me? Have you heard back from HR? And he never did. So we ended up not nominating her. And she said, Sonny, please don't remove me. I am proud of this accomplishment and I want to stay in the program. And I said, okay, that's all I need to hear. I'm going to let HR know that, no, we're not taking you off the website and we're not removing you from the program. And if it's money, and that's the thing that this $2 billion company is worried about, $150, uh, you know, fees to attend the gala. And it was, it was, uh, we were sending party packs out with all kinds of swag and stuff. It was during the pandemic, but I thought I'm going to remove every single barrier. We're going to make sure that Debbie, you're there. Your friends and family can rally around you at your watch party in your home. You don't have to pay for anything. We've got amazing sponsors that help make this possible. So we're going to remove every barrier. So I email HR and I basically say that, and this is an excerpt. And I, I said, 
As this request has come in after we've announced finalists, we are unable to remove Debbie from the program as it would put her in an uncomfortable and compromising position, having something taken away from her that she's earned and publicly. Additionally, we would put uh, we would be put in a position of having to explain why XYZ Company removed an EA from the program among an audience that is no doubt full of your customers, which is a position we don't want to be in, nor do we want you to be in. As there is so much interest and discussion around how, around how companies treat their administrators, this would give the outdated stereotypes ammunition, which is something we are committed to avoiding and overcoming. If I can be frank for a moment, we don't ever hear of executives or other professionals for that matter being asked to resign from their recognition programs. And in our 10 year history, we rarely had companies ask a finalist to be removed, which has only ever happened after an admin has decided to transition out. So she responds, uh, that now Debbie's job may be in jeopardy if we don't remove her and threatens to get legal involved. So I called Debbie and I said, Debbie, you're not gonna believe this. Now she's threatening your job. Again, tell me how to proceed and consider it done. And Debbie said, no, keep me in this program. Nobody is firing me for this. So I emailed the HR person back and let her know that we're not backing down, Debbie's not backing down. Again, it's a $2 billion company, maybe we were nuts, but the long story short, the response was, okay, we'll let her stay in the program, but you don't have permission to use our company logo. Okay, I'm just going to say this right now. The last logo we will ever associate with our program is that company's logo. So we're good. But anyway, um, Debbie was rallied around uh, by friends and family, her wonderful husband, her four grown kids at the 2021 20, Chicago Land Admin Awards as she was recognized in the loyalty award category. Uh, and Debbie called me a few days after saying, Sonny, I'm still on cloud nine. Thank you for making this event so special. Thank you for all the watch party pack. She said, my husband was there. My kids were there. They got to see this. I'm so proud. And I just had the absolute time of my life. It was one of the most significant moments of her life, as she put it. Um, Debbie was nominated by an administrative professional, Pia Fortunato, who used to work at this company. She was the person that inspired Debbie's retired leader to participate in somebody in marketing. So it was an admin advocating for another admin. And then it was Debbie advocating for herself in incredibly brave and courageous ways that she was so proud of. And it was the admin awards advocating for Debbie and being willing to take all kinds of risks that in hindsight could have gotten us in a bunch of trouble. We were the David in the David and Goliath story, but thankfully we weren't driven by fear, but out of love and out of the strongly held belief in what was right. Um, but to finish the story, which is where it moves from um, inspiring to a bit heart wrenching um, is the Chicago Land Admin Awards was in June that year. And in November, on Thanksgiving Day, surrounded by her family, Debbie died suddenly of a brain aneurysm. And her daughter made it a point to email me and to thank me for what we did to advocate for her and for giving her family one of their very best final moments of their lives with their mother, watching her glow with pride to be recognized in a profession that she just loved so much. Um, and then last year we invited, when we came back into in-person events, we invited her husband who was joined by one of her sons to uh, present the loyalty award in Debbie's name. And it was a really, really powerful moment. Um, so I'll end with this, y'all. For centuries, our rights as women and as individual contributors in the workplace have always been fought for by fierce and mighty women that keep fighting the good fight, who are courageous and bold advocates for themselves, their peers, their profession, and who are afraid, but who do it anyway. And so I hope that story of Debbie inspires you to keep pushing and uh, to keep driving change because it's happening, y'all. It's happening. So thank you for letting me share a bit about the importance of recognition and self-advocacy this morning. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sunny. Thank you. Yeah. When I heard that story, it was just, wow, a lot to digest. So it's a, we have about 12 minutes left. Um, so all of you who can stay on, please do. We're going to answer a few questions and then we'll just end with a couple little 
um, announcements or tidbits. Yeah, that that's quite a story. So that I hope certainly does motivate you to to move forward. All right, questions, Malia. What's the first question for us? Sorry, I'm trying to compose myself because she made me cry. <laughs> I know, I know, right? And I <laughs> that's I an amazing uh, story. A story a few weeks earlier. So I mean, yeah. maybe that uh, helped that I kind of knew where Sunny was going with the story. Okay, um, first a quick and easy question, Sunny. A lot of people are asking how they can order the t-shirts and the sweatshirts. Uh, so you can go to uh, go to our website. And there is a, I think it says merch or store. I should know this. Um, but you can order the t-shirts and the hoodies on our site. And if you have any trouble with any of that, and I know some companies are buying them in bulk right now, we do offer some bulk discounts. Um, so just shoot me an email, sunny.noonan at adminawards.com or email info at adminawards.com if you have any special requests. And um, we'll really hustle to, to, to get these out for you. But I love that question. Thank you. <laughs> that is an easy one. A lot of people ask that question. Um, okay, Kelly would like to know. Um, she says self -advo advocacy and self promotion are difficult in a culture where there's a pecking order or seniority among admins who perceive that is negative or ladder climbing. Do you have any insights on how to handle that? Yeah, I got to tell you, y'all, if there are any EAs to CEOs of companies on this call, man, I hope that you are rallying around your fellow admins and then that pecking order is not coming from you because there is nothing worse than an admin that's gotten to that level that's forgotten how they got there or who helped them along the way. And it's by lifting each other up, right, that we really create this culture of recognition and of sharing our achievements. So maybe the answer is creating a group among the admins at that organization and in encouraging everybody to get better at self-promotion and self-advocacy because it's important to the, to the strength of the entire community and to the profession. It's not just beneficial for individuals. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is two different people, Helene and Evelyn, but basically the same question. Would like to know, how does somebody become bold? And secondly, how do we advocate and be bold without coming through as pushy or bragging? You know how you become bold? I'm going to tell you. It's, I think of the things that have shaped me the most in my life. It was when I was down. It was when I was the underdog. Joan, my God, your whole life was full of overcoming challenges. It's doing really difficult things that I didn't know that I could accomplish, but that I kept my head down and powered through. Um, it's doing things in spite of being scared to. That's how you become bold. You don't become bold by saying, I'm going to become more confident. I think the thing that really builds confidence is doing difficult things again and again and again, in spite of fear. Again, fear doesn't go away. Y'all, I was so fear, fearful to get on this webinar this morning. And my team's like, you talk all the time. I'm like, it's 5,000 people registered. And this is a topic that I could get in trouble really fast running my mouth on because I'll be honest, I'm mad lately. I'm mad. We've made a lot of progress, but um, we have work to do. And for 12 years, we've been really shying on the let's be positive. Let's talk about the great companies. So I was a little nervous to talk about the reality, right? Which is we still have work to do, but I did it. I feel so much better. I'm going into an info session this Friday in DC, and I'm going to talk about this again, but I'm not scared. Now I'm on fire because I think it's been beneficial. So um, that's it. Being bold. You got to just do things that scare the heck out of you. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Um, let's see. Sorry. Um, Letitia would like to know what's a great way to remind leadership of Administrative Professionals Day without feeling awkward? Oh, my God. Put it on their calendar first. <laughs> Like I've heard admins that they literally do that. There have been admins that have 
said, hey, I know you're going to forget to send me flowers. So just so you know, I'm using your credit card and I'm sending myself flowers on admin day. Like, <laughs> I think, I mean, listen, y'all know if you've got that kind of relationship with your leader, but um, if they're not going to, in, a, in an organized and deliberate and intentional way, recognize you during admin week, by God, you get your admin community and you have lunch together. You tell your leaders, you will live without us for an hour and a half on April 26th. And then they're going to be like, why? What's April 26th? And you're going to say, you don't know the one day a year that's reserved for us. Like, I remember Boss's Day. Maybe you don't. I think Boss's Day is <laughs> Yeah. And listen, there are so many companies, y'all, as if that bank wasn't bad enough by saying we only support award programs for C-suites. I also found out this week that they also don't do anything to celebrate admin month, week, or day. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, how are we doing on time? We're good. Okay. Um, Valerie is asking, what do you think about executives and managers um, should be taught in MBA slash management education, how to work with an EA? Should it be part of their curriculum? Oh my God. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Because Joan, you know how many executives don't truly know how to utilize their support staff, especially from what I hear from admins, this next generation of leaders, they especially don't. Oh, especially they don't know. Because right? <laughs> they think it's all AI and, and uh, you know, apps and all of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah. And that's actually why we wrote a book. I thought so. I was going right? to say. Yeah. Uh, my colleague, James Bristow and I, hold on. Get it. Yes. I got to get it. Sorry. We wrote, we came out with this book so that we could tell these executives, you need an EA and why you need this and how they give you the edge and how to work with an EA. Um, and, and the fun part of the book was James is 30 years younger than me. So he is that younger hip executive, but what was interesting, he believes in so many of the principles like I do or that I've talked about for years, the strategic partnership. He doesn't, he does not touch his calendar. Nobody touches his calendar, but it's EA. So yeah, anyway. I have to book. mention we'll something. Give it to your executives. <laughs> I just got texted by one of my team members and said, okay. um, you need to tell people that if you get nominated for the admin awards during admin month, you get this for free and you get another gift from Peachbox. But I'm going to make an offer to all of you. And it's only in our nine cities. You got to nominate in the nine cities and nominees have to be present at the gala to win. If you're an admin on this call and you nominate a fellow admin before the end of the month, you will get a sweatshirt and your nominee will get a sweatshirt. But you should be nominating each other. So I forgot to say that. You don't have to buy them. You can get this for free if you recognize one another. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> All right. Let me, we have like, we have like three minutes. However, uh, and I do this once in a while. Sunny, if you're willing to stay on five extra minutes, yeah, I'm willing yeah, yeah. to. Um, so any of you who could hang in there for, you know, five extra minutes, we're happy to stay on and do that with you. I, I just want to do a couple of the announcements for those who have to head off and then we'll take another question. So yeah, first of all, have, uh, we have a final gift as well. Yeah. So Sunny's contact information, say that again, how they can. Uh, get in touch with you, follow you, whatever. Yeah. Um, if somebody from my team can put it in the chat, it's just okay. sunny.noonan at adminawards.com. And we'll tell you what, you can go to our website and see all the cities that we're in. You can be nominated in any city. You just have to get there. So as long as we're not in all the 22 cities that we want to be in yet, we open the program up to anybody. So happy to visit with you after the call. Yes. Oh, uh, we have a grand giveaway. All right, I gotta be sure to do this because Malia was so excited about everything she bought for this basket. She loves this, right? And I, and I just I, have to say, I'm not a wait, shopper, but I, had so I can't much hold it all. Fun. Little things will fall out. There's a mug in there she absolutely loves. I don't know. She's got all kinds of goodies here. So, uh, Malia, who's our lucky winner? Lucky winner for the wonderful gift basket is winner. Winifred Cummings, 
And I have to throw this out there for you, Sunny. She's in New Jersey. <laughs> Yes. Yes. In the house. <laughs> All right, the other quick announcement is we have seven more days of celebrating you. So go, uh, Brian, I think is going to put a link in here, but I worked really hard to come up with an amazing schedule. We're going to have a virtual scavenger hunt. We're going to have gratitude snapshot photo contest. We have a working your magic contest. I'm going to do a virtual gratitude circle one day. So go, go to our calendar because we're, you are awesome and we are celebrating you for seven more days. Okay, give us another question. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see, let's see. Sunny, um, Susie's asking, how do you become a part of I Am Remarkable workshop? Yeah. So if you go to, if you Google, I am remarkable. Um, there are like, we, we've done workshops before. I need to do another one, honestly. Um, but there are workshops all over the place uh, and they're all virtual, but let me know if anybody's interested in that. And if we can get enough folks, I'll, I'll do one. And they're smaller. I think they limit them to under 20 participants because you're doing some deep work and you're sharing your, uh, what makes you remarkable on the call. But if you've got interest, just shoot me an email and I bet you we can schedule one. And here's the other thing, y'all. There's nothing special about me that makes me a facilitator. I just said I wanted to be one. Anybody can be a Google I Am Remarkable facilitator and it would be an awesome idea if every admin on this call signs up to be a facilitator and then runs these in your companies. It'd be awesome. That would be cool. Wow. That would be very cool. Yeah. All um, right. What's up okay. next, Malia? Um, Elise wants to know, what advice would you give to someone with imposter syndrome? I know I'm good at my job, but I'm certainly not perfect. And I wonder how much I'm actually worth. You know, I can really relate to that as like a poor kid from New Jersey who um, is also part of a community that, you know, there aren't a ton of female entrepreneurs that are scaling companies. So I often feel like, who do I think I am? And I'm not smart enough and I don't have a lot of money and all the things that, you know, just clutters up our minds. What I do y'all is I read a lot of biographies and autobiographies about people that have gone on to do amazing things that did not come from much. Um, Viola Davis, amazing biography. Uh, the Shoe Dog biography, Phil Knight, uh, uh, U2, Bono's biography. I mean, these stories of people that are just like you and I. Oprah didn't start at the top, you guys. Like, she didn't. So I think for me, that's helped me get over the who do you think you are crap that goes on in your head. Um, and also, y'all, like, I remember when we went into Silicon Valley, I was scared to death and I'm like, oh my God, these are the people that know how to market. They're so sophisticated. They're so much better. And there's this thing called like constructive paranoia. I was so afraid of failure that I did everything I could to be successful and it ended up working. Um, so I think reading quotes are super inspiring. Yeah, I have so many quote books in my house, in my office, Reading the words of wisdom from people that have gone before us and have gone on to accomplish great things can really, really help you overcome all that junk in your head that's holding you back. Yeah, I'll ditto that because when I started my business, there were so many fears and, you know, especially create this weird niche I was creating. And I did the same thing. I still do today. I still love those stories, but I really read a lot in those early days for the inspiration and quotes. I have quotes all over, you know, I've got them right here, even on my desk that I could flip over and put them everywhere. So that I think that's great advice as well. All right. How about one more question? Pick a good good one out there but i know you just take them in order malia you don't well no yeah <laughs> there's so many um well this is kind of all together a lot of people are asking sunny if you can um nominate yourself and then it looks like your friend judy champion popped on here and said sunny it's a judy please tell everyone how they can advocate for themselves by nominating themselves for an admin award 
So Judy is very special to us. She's the very first leadership award winner in DFW. Uh, she worked for us for years as a nominations director, and now she's a national judge. So oh, wow. Judy, I love you for still looking out for me. Um, so you can self-nominate. And that was something that we started a couple years ago. Because, so you can self-nominate, which initiates the process. You have to have a leader or coworker follow up that self-nomination with an additional nomination in order to advance. So you absolutely can. And we have nominations director, Shatora Mancia, who is also a former EA, who's now with us, um, who will work with you on how to get that nomination to advance. We do a lot of things based on the admin's direction on how to proceed. And sometimes what we'll say is we've identified you know, Zylene Zare as a great candidate for our program. And as part of our evaluation process, we've asked her to give us the names of supervisors and coworkers that could endorse her candidacy through a nomination for the program. So we do it in a way that it's not ick, that it doesn't look like you've come to us saying, I want to be nominated, although there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, but we get it. We're sensitive about it, but we're happy to talk to you after today's call about how to make that happen. Yes, yes. Very good. Yes, that was an important, definitely an important uh, piece. <laughs> well, I know our time truly is up now. Sorry, I know you could probably listen to Sunny for quite a while. Be sure I'm you sick of listening out. to me. Reach out. And I know, you know, the thing is, um, we didn't get to the rest of some of the things we wanted to talk about. And we, Sunny and I were talking about maybe doing a blog from this or article or something. So We'll, we'll try to keep people posted on that. Um, it, it's really rich. And Sunny, I just want to thank you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. Uh, I can't wait to our, our next uh, event we're going to do together, um, which actually you you talked about uh, in doing a, um, uh, what is it we're going to do in it's September? A round table discussion. A round table. Table. All so, about yeah. Joan for a change. I'm going to interview y'all so fascinating we knew Joan was a rock star before we said hey we need to honor you with this award but when I learned more about her backstory and her history it is one inspiring minute after another so we're going to talk about that in the fall we're going to do it right Joan yep we're going to do it in September so they'll be able to find out about that on your website well we'll put something out as well so yeah stay tuned for that everyone we love you all. You are awesome. Yes. Go let your awesomeness shine. And we have more exciting things for you. So I hope I see your names popping up uh, over the next seven days. Bye. Bye. Thank Sunday. you. Thank, Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you, Malia. Oh, Malia's awesome. Woohoo. Malia, woohoo. <laughs> Bye. Bye.